you are listening to KSG podcast this is a short crisp concise exam oriented edited editorial for civil services aspirants in this podcast we are going to talk about poverty in india source for the content is vivek debroy's article for the mint poverty is a much debated issue it has been an issue in general it has also received additional attention because of the exogenous shock of the pandemic as a stylized fact Growth leads to a reduction in poverty though the composition of growth is also important poverty is usually measured through headcount ratios the percentage of population below a determined poverty line that poverty line is typically defined as a minimum basket of goods and services required for subsistence converted into a nominal consumption expenditure figure using appropriate prices that has been the approach in india since poverty began to be measured in the 1950s and was further refined in the 1970s In other words one uses monthly per capita consumption expenditure to define the poverty line in passing as is common with the household surveys in other countries income data is unreliable this does not imply that consumption poverty is the only way to measure poverty which has many aspects hence there have been attempts to construct multidimensional measures but a lack of data and subjectivity hasn't made these attempts very robust the tried and tested headcount ratio supplemented by something like the human development index or hdi is as good a measure as any to return to the stylized fact growth leads to a reduction in the poverty ratio the proportion of people below the poverty line declines and so does the absolute number of poor in a process of growth which households move above the poverty line those just below it as poverty ratios drop further reductions become more difficult so over time the reduction isn't linear that's the reason once growth has led to sharp reductions headcount ratios tend to be sticky to state it more technically consumption distributions are log normal declines are sharper when the thick part of the distribution moves above the poverty line growth is correlated with poverty reduction that is empirically validated by cross country experience as well as india's historical experience our growth may have slowed but before the covid shock did it turn negative since it did not there must have been declines in poverty perhaps at slower rates it is possible that the temporary shock of covid temporarily reversed the trend in addition to the health and employment shock there was an increase in medical costs while figures have floated around suggesting millions of indians dropped below the poverty line because of the pandemic if growth enabled those just below the poverty line to move above it is plausible that a temporary exogenous shock would move them below the line temporarily that is once growth recovers the negative trend will reverse itself to measure poverty one needs a poverty line and accurate data the household consumption expenditure survey has been the basis of estimation of poverty in the country it is a detailed survey seeking information on expenditure by households of around 350 items of food clothing durable goods education health transport fuel rent etc The last such survey for which results are available is 2011 to 2012. Hence in a sense the official poverty ratio still date to 2011 to 2012. Using various assumptions people have tried to extrapolate what 2011 to 2012 told us. The National Sample Survey Office or NSSO is going to start next NSS survey in July 2022 for the period 2022 2023 the final results of which may be available by the end of 2023 this means we should explore alternative data sources that are reliable enough to provide comprehensive coverage the periodic labor force survey by the NSSO also collects information about usual household consumption expenditure till 2019 to 2020 the PLFS used to collect the monthly consumption expenditure of households through a single question However in the PLFS conducted during 2020 to 2021 the information on households expenditure was collected through five questions relating to a goods and services b home grown produce c imputed value of in kind transfers and gifts d expenditure on clothing footwear etc and e expenditure on durable goods in other words the PLFS now approximates a NSS household consumption expenditure survey rather well To complete the picture one now has to splice in a poverty line the official poverty line is still the tendulkar poverty line available for 2011 to 2012 state wise and separately for rural and urban areas 
We have used the Consumer Price Index or CPI for price changes since 2011 to 2012 to arrive at corresponding poverty lines for 2020 to 2021. After that, using PLFS 2020 to 2021 household monthly consumption data, the percentage of population living below that poverty line has been estimated. The All India Poverty Ratio in 2020 to 2021 is 17.9% compared to 21.9% in 2011 to 2012, with the lower poverty in urban India compared to rural India. Poverty ratios have declined over this period, though by not as much as they might have. The quantum was limited by the pandemic. This, however, has implications for sustainable development goals. The explanation for poverty ratio stickiness is clear from our state-level figures and with some variations across rural and urban areas. Of particular concern is the deterioration in Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Karnataka, Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Sikkim and Uttarakhand. In contrast, Assam, Bihar, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, Uttar Pradesh and West Bengal are remarkable successes. These red areas, with an obvious difference between the base, that is the absolute, and the increment, are no longer classic Bimaru. With caveats, that is what these findings tell us. That's it for this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. To join KSJ India courses and to crack the ice exam, visit ksjindia.com. You can also get a PDF of this podcast on ksjindia.com. Thanks for listening and do subscribe to our channel.